Welcome to Oak and Bros. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What number are we on? Does I, I don't even I think care. El- I don't know. Uh, this is 11. 11, 11. Make a so, wish. So Michael and I were just having a very heated discussion. Um, it's not heated. I, think, I was I right. I'm not heated, but just. I was right and you were wrong. I want to make the podcast shorter, especially if it's just us two. I feel we can we can zero in better on the content and zero in better on a subject and then make it shorter, end it. And I think that will get more traction and more views because I don't think necessarily, I think 40 minutes will intimidate somebody to say, I don't have the time to listen to this. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to make like the two minute clips that we post on LinkedIn and on Facebook and stuff like that get a lot of traction. Mm -hmm. So how many views are you getting on those two minute clips? Anywhere from 250 to 1500 2000 views Mm -hmm. but the podcast the actual 40 minute podcast the actual 40 minute podcast we're getting we we're getting on average 50 to 100 views Mm -hmm. and the average watch time is 11 to 12 minutes okay all right so we're done that's a great podcast (laughs) thanks everybody well listen that was an amazing podcast about we can talk about this more but you know i i think that what did you start posting i think if we do an interview I think, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, yeah, we can make it longer get into, but if it's just, if it's just the two of us, what did you start posting on this week? Cause you know, us with social media, like what was that? What's that app? TikTok? Yeah. I, I started posting on TikTok, and hold on. Let me show you. I want to show an example of what our content actually looks like here. It's very millennial and it's very like it's, young and hip it's and weird. Um, but we're trying to get in. You know, it's for five-year-olds. Alex, I won't say a five-year-old, but like my son is 11 years old and he's obsessed the, with TikTok. Those are the future travel managers of tomorrow. Right. Those are the future production agents of tomorrow. Those are the future. But why not Snapchat? Like why, why TikTok? Why is TikTok being, is so big for you right well, now? I don't like Snapchat because the message expires. Okay. So I, I didn't feel, know that. Yeah. The, the message expires and there's no lifespan. Okay. When now we started posting on TikTok and easily getting 500 views a video. Wow. Easily, and that's without trying. Right. So the reach on there goes very, very far. Gary Vee has been talking about TikTok now for mm-hmm. a few months. Yeah, and I've I been have, watching. I have five posts on there. I watch the shark puppet on TikTok. Yeah, no, it's I funny. think shark, I don't, I, I don't know who this guy is, but Harvey he's, post the post shark puppet on he TikTok. Is, absolutely brilliant this guy he makes a a, a 10 second video on a shark puppet yeah. screaming yeah at the top of his lungs Jesus. And it's it's about a shark puppet that <laughs> yeah, loves guys, cheese look, look up shark puppet on it's hysterical they're, they're just viral videos so like i it's the mtv for yeah. this generation you know like at the past year i've accumulated hundreds of minutes of videos of pictures right so i'm just going through my library of content mm-hmm. and then making a video on TikTok. eric plus <laughs> and then, eric and then, streaming service and then you know like i i made a video of fascia washing a car right. and just so fresh so clean and you know it's very cool so if you guys don't know how tiktok actually works you take a video and then it's a video editing right on your phone Right. So you can go and add music, add a sticker, you can add effects where it goes like back and forth, or you can do fade in, fade out, add fireworks. And, uh, you know, the hope is that you go viral, which you can never predict. I have yet, we've been doing this for almost two years now. Mm-hmm. I watched this great interview on, with Gary V about yeah, going viral. Yeah, I know. But, you know, I've had one post go kind of viral and it was uh, just talking about Uber but nothing came of it. It got 20,000 likes and that was it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get way more traction on a post that has 1,200 views. Mm-hmm. 1,200. Because those are the people views. that want to click on your right, view. Right, where it's very targeted, where like right. one of my videos will be posting an entrepreneur or, or, or um, will be trending an entrepreneur. Or, or trending, family business. Or trending in family business. Right. Those go far. Right. I have yet to make an original piece of content that has took off mm-hmm. and put me put us on the map mm-hmm. we're on the map well you know we're outside of our eight thousand or so followers on linkedin right right you know because that's really where our b2b is where our target market is i don't think necessarily right. we're going to find a lot of a lot of our like we're not going to find a lot of our clients on tiktok mainly right now it's just fun 
I don't think we're we're not going to get the next no, big not. corporation using us. Same TikTok. thing with Instagram. But but building out where eventually those kids on TikTok are going to move over to LinkedIn. They're going to say, "Oh, I know BLS," and that could be a future fine. That that could be they're they're the they're the world of tomorrow. As cheesy right. as that sounds, and it seems to me that social media ages up. Right. Yeah. So like everyone in college was on Facebook. And again, I'm not personally on Facebook, but Facebook aged up. Now, if you're on Facebook, it's kind of like passe, like mom's on Facebook with all of her cousins and they're in their sixties, <laughs> yes. you know? So like they're all keeping in touch through there. Yeah. I think Instagram started out as, as a photo editor app and that aged up. I created a profile, Eric Oaken at BLS. That was like my, on Instagram on, or Facebook on, on Instagram right. eight months ago. Right. So that was, I've never had an Instagram. Instagram profile, right? And I can't get any traction. But they're, they're do you getting, post they're personal getting, stuff or do you post BLS stuff? BLS related things, you know, right. you know the the same the same stuff I'm putting out on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. except just more inter in Instagram centric. So it's it's just a little bit modified. The same way I'm doing it for TikTok. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm posting TikTok centric advertisements mm-hmm. or not advertisements, just content and they're getting a lot of views. They're getting likes. Mm -hmm. And then on Instagram, I can post a beautiful picture of an Escalade underneath a palm tree and I'll get eight likes. Do you think that if you posted us flying private on Instagram, that that would create traction that you would become, you don't think so? No, no, no. Of us getting onto a G4. If you're not going to pay for it, but everyone has a picture of that on Instagram. I know. and, And they're getting a million views because they did it. They started it five years ago. We missed I the see. boat. If we would have started that five years ago, that's why getting on TikTok now and is the new Instagram is the new Instagram because because right. I'm already getting 500 views. Right, they may not be worth anything. They're not. It's just getting your name out. It's there. just it's just starting on the base platform where you know what maybe in a year or two I'll have 10,000 followers. Right. That's right. what I'm aiming for. It won't be 10,000 travel managers no. or 10,000 no. chef concierge, no. but it's going to be 10,000 people who are going to be aware of your brand. So, you know, they, when they see you or they know that there's an event, you're just going to link up in their mind that BLS right. is part of that. Right now, um, there was a picture on LinkedIn yesterday and it was a team. Th- there's the Boston limo show going on right now. Yeah. Um, and we made a big splash in the Vegas limo show this past year. The, Which we're going to again. We're, yeah, we're going to be there again. Do you feel that like conventions are, are worthy? Like, I do. Why? I do. I think it's part of... Because the, we didn't... Mind we, you, I want to give a little history. We, we did not participate in, in any... Many, in many conventions. We went to a couple of them just to be like participants and everything. But this year, this past year, we joined... Uh, it was the LCT show. And I think we're moving to do, doing the show for Driven or something mm-hmm. in Vegas. The idea of um, of going to these conventions was pretty off putting. I think it's. I think it's. Dad, dad didn't want to be part no, of it. I Even mom that, too. I think that it's. It goes in the same vein as as posting content online. Well, that's what I'm trying to correlate it yeah, to. Yeah, I I think that I think that it's directly related, and I think that we were definitely wrong for not being involved mm-hmm. back when we should have been getting involved, mm-hmm. and um, you know, it just puts faces to names. And you, you know, very rarely does someone say, okay, I'll book with you or, okay, I'll, si- I'll sign with you. Shout out to Tommy boy. Tommy boy. Um, Best movie ever. You know, okay, I'll buy from you. That, that very rarely does that happen, but you go to a convention. It can though. It can. I want to preface yeah, that. No, it can. Right. But very rarely, you know, like you go to a convention and then you go to the next convention and then you go to the next convention and that person recognize you and then they'll see some content on LinkedIn and then they'll see you over here and then you'll write them an email and then chances are in two years from the first time you started Hang with on them, one second. you can convert something. Hang on one second. A couple weeks ago, you and I went to the city. We went to Times Square and we went to an office in Times Square. Yep. And we walked in and like, I think we're normal yep. schmucks from Long Island. Like I think, yeah, we, you know. We went to a meeting and, and we went to an account <laughs> that, that we have that we had that we're trying to get more, that we were trying mm-hmm. to get more out of. Mm-hmm. And I, I walked in and then Michael introduced himself and said, Hey, I'm American. He's like, yeah, I know you. I see all your stuff on LinkedIn all the time. Yeah. But, and that's not, and there was a little bit of starstruck in that. There's, I don't know about that, but he was in awe of you. <laughs> Can I have your <laughs> he's autograph? Gonna, he's going to see this. I know. I know. Um, Teasing. No, but I, you know, I think that if you're not posting, you're an idiot. Right. It's, it's that simple. Right. If you're not going to post content, 
you're going to become irrelevant. You're going to become irrelevant, and right. it, co- it it costs next to nothing. Just time. You know, we I we have ads running on LinkedIn. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I have ads running on LinkedIn to specific markets that we're looking at, to um to job titles mm-hmm. that we want to reach. Mm-hmm. Oh, I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, we're spending twenty five, thirty dollars a day. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> it that adds up in a month. Right. You you'd be surprised. Gary V pushes. Yeah. Especially if you have multiple pieces running to multiple right. different segments of people that you're looking to reach. Right. And the click through rates aren't great, but it's all about building brand awareness mm-hmm. because they're going to see you and then all of a sudden you're going to go to a convention or something bad's going to happen with their other vendor and then they're going to say, and then your ad's going to pop up. Right. Or your really personal p- piece of content that that you just made may strike a chord mm-hmm. or maybe one of our sales guys is going to send a cold email to them and they're going to say, Oh, you know what? Why don't you come in for a meeting? Mm-hmm. It's just all about putting yourself content. Don't be, don't only be the person that's just consuming. If right. you want something, if you have something to gain or you think you have something to gain, just start. Mm-hmm. But they're posting, they're advertising, and and they they're becoming TV commercials. And what does everyone do when there's a TV commercial? They, they go to their phone. They're not interested. Yep. So we're not sitting there and going, BLS is the greatest. BLS is amazing. Luxury um, chauffeured the, tram transportation. Right. You, the only way to go to for your yeah, destination. No, everyone Shut knows. The fuck everyone up. knows that already. Yeah. Right. Everyone exactly. Yeah, everyone knows exactly. Yeah. Like we're all over the world. <laughs> we have the like, best cars and the best drivers. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. And we're luxury. Next. Right. You know, who cares? Right. I want to switch gears for one minute here and talk about um, expansion. Did you always want to be worldwide? I'm not talking about the network. I'm talking about having BLS offices everywhere. Yes. Yes. That was a dream of yours. Yeah. What about you? I mean, that was, that was my everything. I remember going to tennis when I was in like, fourth grade Mm -hmm. and just saying to mom, mom, you know, we have LA now, right? We opened up in LA and you know, we were traveling there and things were just really blossoming. And I said, why don't we do, you know, Chicago or why don't we do Miami or something? And I didn't realize I keep forgetting about this, but mom and dad made every attempt at opening up in other cities. They they, they were trying to do Washington, DC, San Francisco, Orlando. We tried Orlando was almost there. Yeah. Orlando was there, but just, I mean, it's the guy who we went in with just didn't work out. He had a glass table. Okay. <laughs> he had a glass table. And for those Scarface, <laughs> for those Scarface uh, fans out there, you know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. We went into his house. He had a glass table and he kept slicking his hair back. <laughs> when we just said, this is not for us. We were with him the entire week. Yeah. And then we were about to sign with this guy. I don't even, I don't even remember his name, but he was funny as fuck. Mm-hmm. And, and we were going to open BLS of Orlando. That's when Disney we and staying, Universal staying at the beach club. Oh yeah. 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 That was great. And, um, Ah, just, you know, we had the guy from San Francisco that we were trying to go with. And then we tried these licensing agreements. It it just, we figured out a way to do it where it's not, uh, it's, it's very easy to do for us. Right. We're not going to necessarily give away that secret sauce. Hell no. Hell no. But but we, we're, we're, we, we have a way. Right. And the, the opening in Vegas was put a really bad yeah, taste. That was our last flagship operation that we opened up. That that put a very bad taste in mom and dad's mouth when we, you know, cause Vegas was our Disneyland, right? Instead of going to Disney world growing up, we always want to go to Vegas. And when we had that opportunity, I remember mom and dad incorporated BLS limousine service of Nevada Inc. In like 1998, thinking that one day we were going to open up in Vegas because we love that city so much. And then it was Oscar night. It was March, 2002. I'll never forget this. I was sitting with Kevin in Queens and that was our busiest night of the Oscar night is one of our busiest nights of the year. And I was reading through uh, this limousine magazine, LCT, 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 LCT it's mag. It's, it's, it's a great magazine. Yeah, no, no, no definitely. I, don't, I just don't want to confuse because I sometimes get confused between the magazines, but LCT mag, great people, great magazine. That, and we, we took a lot of advice from that magazine mm-hmm. and I fanned to the back of the magazine and it said Nevada limousine service for sale. And I'm thinking like the first thing is, oh, it's probably like Reno or Lake Tahoe. It's like, who the hell wants to be there? Admiral limo. It was Admiral limo. And I said to cat, I first called dad because dad was 
Love obsessed Vegas. Right. with Vegas as we were too. I mean, I, I, I love that city in every capacity. Mm -hmm. And I called him. I said, dad, I think there's a Nevada limousine service. for He says, call him up, see what you got. I called, it was a broker. The broker connected us to this guy, Chris, Chris Burton Shaw. Yeah. He was a was pilot for, for Mandalay Bay group. That was before they were bought out by MGM. And it was just the typical guys who went into limo business because they thought it was easy. Right. And they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. And I asked Kevin, I'm like, what do you think? Think we could do this? He's like, well, it depends on the price. And we bought a license in Vegas. 15 car license. 15 car license. And the, when you project something into the universe and you want it to come true, it always does come true, but it's sometimes never how you expect it to be. Mm -hmm. And to say, man, I'm opening a limousine service in Vegas. I'll never forget saying in 2002, you know, we're going to go to the Mirage. We're going to have dinner. We're going to go out with clients. And, and I had this whole fantasy about it and I lived that entire fantasy there, but it was never what you thought it would be that being Vaca a tourist vacationing in Vegas and being and, a business owner and being a business owner in Vegas, two different sports. It's not even the same game. Yeah. It's two different sports. And I will never forget big shout out to Charlie Horky, big shout out to our friend, our our step uncle, Charlie Horky. <laughs> Charlie said, we met him at convention. We bought the license that year. We got approved unanimously by the NTA, but it was the TSA back then. And Charlie said, don't, I've been here. I think he was there 15 years before us. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew what he was doing. Don't bring the New York and LA. Style. Don't bring the New York and LA. Style. And we, we walked away laughing saying, oh, he just wants us to fail. My God, we got our asses kicked. We got our asses kicked in that city because we thought that we had a secret formula that worked in New York and LA and we were going to bring it to a city that we thought that we knew, right? We've been going to Vegas since we were, since we were babies. Yep. We thought we understood the formula for Vegas and it's not the case. You have to adapt to the environment. The environment is not going to adapt to you. Yep. And when you're going to go into a market and go, I'm going to change this, like we said to Vegas, yep. there was a pen and teller um, billboard on the strip. I think it, it it still might be there. Vegas won't change us. Vegas won't change Penn and Teller. Mm -hmm. no, it's right. Like Vegas won't change us. Vegas won't change us. Yep. Right. They're going to stay true to who they are. We stay true to who, to who we were, but we still had to adapt to what Vegas needed that, you know, coming in, we're going to charge $60 an hour for a sedan plus, plus, plus no, with a not. two hour minimum. No, you're not. No, you're not. It doesn't work like that here. Yep. And that was an education that I wish I would have learned in school as opposed and to fucking geometry. A lot of things are changing in Vegas now. Well, ben, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about the whole, I, yeah, I don't know. No, no, I want to no, talk I, about that too. I, I want, I want to lead into that. But how then, did it start though? I mean, we had, we had a learning curve, right? In Vegas, you start the day with very little rides, mm -hmm. right? That was in the, in the heyday. You start the day with very little rides. You had some concierge yeah, and, rides. And, and, and at the rest of our company, 99.9% .9 of the work is pre-booked. Right. And then reserved, you have the ASAP reserved vehicles. Right. And then you have the on-demand and ASAP rides, which, you know, you take care of. But in Vegas, you were starting a day with 30, 40 rides, whatever. You started with, you know, your usual clients that book with you and whatnot. The hotels will call for prearranged rides. And then you put all the cars at your doors and you have to be contracted with those properties. And the drivers would generate the revenue for you. And you'd end up the day with five, 600 rides. I remember. Not the, anymore, by the way. Not anymore. And I'll get to that. But the night of the Mayweather Pacquiao fight, yeah. it was the weekend of the Mayweather Pacquiao fight which was the biggest fight in boxing history. It, was, it wasn't even a good fight. We did like 800 rides right. with 35 cars. Didn't farm out one car. You can't farm out in that city because the, everyone's so limited to what they can give right. you. You know, in New York, oh, we need a JFK done. Uh, you know, it's an ASAP. Go farm it out. You yeah, can do what just, you have to was, do. It was just the cars were moving all day long. It didn't matter where the car dropped. You would, they were, they you were picking up another pick ride. Up, right. I think the entire city was sold up, but 35 cars with 800, 800 rides, it was, it was magnificent. And, it, and there was so much potential. That was, that was, the, that was the crescendo. Of, that was the of, pinnacle. Of, Uber opened up a year later. Yeah, Uber opened up and then just decimated the whole market. And then that leads into what's going on with Bell and ODS. They're selling to this company called Captive. Is that what they're called? Caption. I think Caption. I don't know, but they're they're selling to, uh, Bell, which was one of the largest there. Frias sold, so Frias no longer exists. He owned Desert Valley Cab and uh, a bunch of other cab companies and Las Vegas Limos. Las Vegas Limos no longer exist. Captain. Captain, Captain Mobility. Spell that. K-A-P-T-Y-N. Yeah, and then... Uh, but Bell, what, Bell's an institution in Vegas. Not anymore. 
Yeah, no, they're not. Well, he's, uh, he, did, he didn't sell yet, but you right. know, things are definitely changing, and that is the Uber effect. I I believe. Yeah, I believe it. to to have this market, which was such a, on lockdown, they weren't. They, you can't get Sheldon Adelson who tried to open up tried Sheldon to open Adelson. up a limousine service there, right. and they and he was stopped by the local companies there. You know, and and there is pros and cons to having that um, that type of of I want to say like protection. To say like you know the outside companies no, can't come in. I, I, no, it's it's I don't I don't think it is. I think that I think there are pros they, and cons they, to it. A, there's a free market, and and it should be a free market. Not in Las Vegas, bro. No. Well, listen, you know, <clears throat> increasingly it's becoming like that in in other markets. Now, mm -hmm. this used to be a very easy business to enter. Now it's getting very hard. Unless you Uber or Lyft, you could just open up and well, just say, no, "Well, not anymore." Screw you to regulations. Not anymore. Not anymore. Look, look what happened in New York, L L.A. The, the, you know, the, right. that, 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 that's a whole other topic to, to discuss. But uh, Well, the California it's is, not destroying so, their you know, is destroying the monster. York, you're not allowed to add any more cars to your fleet unless it's electric. Right. L.A., there's no more independent contractors. It's becoming a very hard business to enter into. Mm -hmm. And our prediction is, is that there is only going to be two or three regional players in each market right. left. And what about global companies? Um, I think there will be a few global companies. Right. Us being one. Without a doubt. And I think that uh, there will be regional players here and there. Mm -hmm. And the mom and pops and the smaller companies are just going to be sucking off the teat of all the regional players. Right. Because, you know, that... Uh, can a regional player become a global player? Yeah. Mm -hmm. just do like, can a guy can. operating in... Just do what all the other global guys did right and you get there right open up multiple no multiple <laughs> offices yeah it's, and, it's, and yeah it's it's not hard right but it takes a lot of work right you know and you have to work for it yeah but that's with anything right you know every single like that i've gotten on linkedin was worked towards right you know not, none of that was given to us none of it right that i started linkedin I created my LinkedIn profile a year and a half, two years ago. With, when dad passed. With nothing. Right. With nothing on there. Right. And, and now and you now, have a... And now we have a podcast studio. Podcast studio. It is a studio. It with is that, a studio. It's 22 minutes. I'm ending this thing. Are you really? Yeah, yeah I think that was cool. That was nice. That was good. Yeah. I, I hope that Nick and Kelly like that. We're under the 30 <laughs> minute mark. <laughs> Nick, Kelly, I'm trying. Listen, <laughs> We're trying. No, no, no. You would keep going. I would love to talk. I could talk for hours. But this is awesome. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks, everybody. We'll subscribe. Well, hold on, hold on. Hit the like button. Hit the like right? button. We got to say that. Hit, Hit the, the like button. button. Subscribe. subscribe. And share this with people who you think it would help. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.